Rothschild claimed to be Jewish. Not the nationality of a Jew, but Jew in terms of belief in God and a follower of divine revelation. But was Mr. Rothschild a moral man? Here's a man that had five sons. And he sent his five sons into five countries. One son went to England, one son to France, one to Austria, one to Italy, and another remained in Germany with the father. And from these sons, and the money that these sons had, they worked and maneuvered and manipulated until they gained control of the central banks of England, France, Austria, Italy, and Germany. The control of these central banks went into the hands of individuals whose interests were not necessarily in harmony with the best interests of that nation. These privately owned central banks became the printer of the money and the extenders of credit of that particular nation. Government and politics in Europe was always controlled by the money interests. Wars were fought, and in order to fight a war, governments had to borrow money. They borrowed money from these central banks. The central banks waxed rich because they loaned money and charged interest, then took over when one side prevails against the other. And when governments could not satisfy the indebtedness, then some of the natural wealth of that country flowed to the bankers. They would loan money to both sides in the conflict because they really didn't care who won or who lost. For centuries, there has been big money to be made by international bankers in financing governments and kings. Such operators, however, are faced with certain thorny problems. We know that smaller banks operate to protect themselves by taking collateral. But what kind of collateral can you get from a government or a king? The process through which one collects a debt from a government or a monarch is not a subject taught in the business schools of the university. And most of us, never having been in the business of financing kings or governments, have not given the problem much thought. But there's a king financing business. And to those who can ensure collection, it is a lucrative business. Like a business, no government can borrow big money unless that government is willing to surrender to the creditor some of its sovereignty. Certainly, international bankers who have loaned hundreds of billions of dollars to governments around the world command considerable influence in the policies of such governments. But the ultimate advantage, listen to this, that the creditor has over a king or a president is that if the ruler gets out of line, the banker can finance his enemy or his rival. Therefore, if you want to stay in the lucrative financing business of kings and governments, it is wise to have an enemy or a rival waiting in the wings to unseat every king or every president to whom you lend money. If the king doesn't have an enemy, you got to be able to create one. The founding fathers of this nation said they did not want private control of a central bank because to them such a bank would be the detriment of this democracy. Thomas Jefferson saw 
a privately owned central bank as worse than an opposing army. Thomas Jefferson wanted to keep America free from those things that led to the destruction of many nations and governments in Europe. And so a privately owned central bank was unthinkable to the founding fathers of this nation and therefore it was written in the Constitution that only Congress should have the right to print the money and the instruments of credit. Did you know that from 1900 to 1913, the federal government had a very manageable debt into the millions of dollars? But in 1913, something happened. Four things were set up in the year 1913. First, the Federal Reserve Bank, the IRS, the FBI, and the Anti-Defamation League of B'nai B'rith all were set up in the same year. Is that a coincidence or is there a tie-in? I don't have time to go into all the details, but by the help of Allah, I'll do that in further writings if it is the will of Allah. But it's enough to say that two German Jews, Paul and Felix Warburg, and the International Bankers of Europe wined and dined a senator named Nelson Aldrich who was the maternal grandfather of Nelson Aldrich Rockefeller. And they wined and dined him for two years, showing him the, the, the central banks of Europe. Senator Aldrich came back to America and was given the job of being a part of the national, a study of the national monetary system. Nelson Aldrich with Paul Warburg had a secret meeting in Jekyll Island, Georgia, off the coast of Georgia. And in that secret meeting, what came out of it was the basis of the Federal Reserve Act. They tried to get it through Congress under the name the Aldrich Federal Reserve Act. But since Aldrich was so tied to the international banking system, the members of Congress under the leadership of President Taft, you know, they voted it out. So they went back to the drawing board and they redid it. And they pushed it through on December the 22nd, 1913, just as Congress was about to break for the Christmas recess. Wanting to get home quick, they pushed it through. And the Federal Reserve Act became law. But in 1912, there was a great presidential election where William Taft was challenged in his own party by Teddy Roosevelt. Both uh, 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 Roosevelt was financed by some of these international bankers. They hated Taft for his derailing of the Aldrich Federal Reserve Act. So they wanted to get at Taft. But they felt that a Republican shouldn't bring this act before Congress. It would be better if it came through a Democrat. So they, they same bankers put money behind Woodrow Wilson. And Woodrow Wilson sold the American presidency to the international bankers. He was elected in 1912, and in 1913,
16, the Federal Reserve Act became law, and the Central Bank of the United States was taken over by a group of private banking institutions. Then somebody else began printing the money. Like Rothschild said, he don't care who rules as long as he controls the purse strings. In 1913, America was not yet at war. In the last winter solstice of the 6,000-year rule of the enemy, America was betrayed by one of her presidents and one of her senators and one of her uh, members of the United States Treasury. Do you know why I'm teaching this subject on Jesus Saves? Because after I say what I'm saying today, if I ain't got a savior, I'm sure going to need one after I say what I say today. Let me just finish. Don't be frightened for me. You better be frightened for yourself. Because some stuff is going down in America right now as we speak. That all our lives are in danger right now. And I've got to sound the alarm, brothers and sisters. I don't care nothing about my life. It's your life that I want to save. Listen, now that the bank that prints money is in the hands of private interests, the idea is to push up and inspire the government to borrow. How do you do it? Get America into war. The war in Europe started in 1914. And by 1917, under a lie about the Lusitania being sunk by German subs, the American people were called into a war to end all wars. <laughs> Boy, this is heavy, man. I mean, you, you can't believe how wicked, how low down and rotten. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't believe how wicked these people are to play games with your lives and the lives of your babies. Create a war just to get more money, to charge more interest, and send your babies to die for bullshit. Excuse me, but bullshit is the dropping of a cow or a bull. It's BS, it's lies, it's deceit. And the American people went to war in 1917 
and black people sued to become a part of the war. Because we didn't want to be left out of America. So America signed us up to fight the war. And black men died. But they don't know what the hell they were dying for. And neither did the white ones know what they were dying for. But the man of sin got to be revealed. And I thank God that he put it in my heart. I don't have no fear of those bastards. I want to expose them all. on and sought to persecute everybody white or black that tampers with control of the poor people that's right, that's right. whether you're communist socialist oh, come on, whether you have an idea that could stimulate the masses with truth the FBI pounces on you in the same year that the FBI was established the anti-defamation league was established the Anti-Defamation League has been used to cover up and to fight against anybody that is not necessarily anti-Semitic, but anybody who will expose those Jews 